I used to work at TVNZ as the um, head of the lifestyle unit and my office, the door of my office looked out and the person who was on the desk opposite me was Jane. And I always liked her energy. She's, she's really always positive. She, she's the sort of woman who, she designs and makes her own clothes. She, you know, she can, she's probably a mechanic. And I mean, she's just good at everything. And I thought, Shh, I need her. We're both Capricorns, which technically shouldn't work either, but does. Um, I think we have quite different skills that we, we naturally, we didn't know about that. We didn't really know each other when we started the company. So in some ways it was instinct and luck. But it does work, and it means that um, Mel does um, more, of, she, she's very good with people and does a lot of that um, people management, and I tend to do a lot more with the technical side of things. I don't know why she's in business with me, because she does ten times more than I could ever do. Um, but it's a fabulous business partnership, and I mean, I've been in business before where it didn't quite work out, because it doesn't always. Um, and I'm just, I count my blessings every day that she's agreed to go into business with me. With Intrepid Journeys, people just kept telling us it couldn't really be done. Every step of the way, TVNZ took three years to convince that you know it would work and um, and to find the money, which you know is fair enough. But then, uh, cameramen uh, said it couldn't be done on the equipment we were choosing to use. Sound men said it couldn't be done without a sound man person. So you know, I guess it's that always thinking. You know, um, we can give it a shot, and to be able to do that, you really do have to have your own company. I keep trying to tell people it's not a travel show, you know, especially the people when we're in a country and they're trying to show off, oh, you must come and see the museum or something, you know, you come and see these old ruins. And it's, it is about the country, I mean, of course, but it's actually more about being a New Zealander. It's about what it's like to be a New Zealander when you're away being confronted by other cultures and living with them. And we do a lot of um, homestays and things like that. So it's actually more about learning about yourself through the medium of travel. The presenters that we take away Almost all of them have risen to the challenge and they know what it is and they don't, you know, they just really get in there and, I, and it, it, it's really heartwarming to see. And, and the other things, I've ended up getting, these people become, you know, your mates because you've travelled 15 days with them, you've, you've, you've rubbed their back while they've vomited, you've, you know, <laughs> you've helped them with diarrhoea medication or then when they're homesick and all that sort of stuff. And you form a really strong bond and that never goes away and you might not see them for ages but then you do and it's... Um, you know, it's really, yeah, we've become like the Intrepid Journey's family, <laughs> yeah. He hadn't trained, was in the most appalling physical shape to be climbing a mountain, uh, and said, I'm going to do it. And you're like going, well, I don't know if I'd be saying that right now. Um, but he did, he just basically stuck at it and he put one foot in front of the other until he got to the top of the mountain. I gave him plenty of opportunities to quit and I said, look, we can fake it. If you're really worried about how it looks, we'll fake it. I mean, that's not something we would do, but this guy had turned blue. And um, I was basically thinking, you know, I'm going to be responsible for your death. Uh, that's not going to look good. So, um, and also it would be a great loss to New Zealand. So let's not have that happen. But he just said, no, I can do it. I can do it. I'll do it at my own pace. I can do it. And so we just, one step at a time, we did it. And the look on his face at the top of that mountain, you know, what he had achieved was quite something. And so, you know, that's a lovely thing to have been a part of. Also lovely that it ended well. Um, wouldn't have liked it to have ended any other way. So Marcus first said to me, let's do something on trains. He said, I said, what, a one-off taco? He said, oh, I think, you know, maybe four. And I went, well, I don't think there's an hour in it, Marcus. Well, there was, there was 12 half hours in the end, you know. Um, and we just had an amazing time on there because if you love trains, you know, we were getting to ride in the cabs. There's a lot of amazing history around the rails and it's not just about rails, it's about why the rails went to certain places, you know. Was it because of the coal? Was it because, um, I mean, Southland had an amazing passenger train network, you know, that Minnie Dean used to travel on and there's some amazing history stories around trains, you know. And so it was just the most lovely series going around the country. I was doing a recce for Off the Rails um, from Christchurch through the West Coast and uh, going, we were, we were, uh, for some reason it was quite a tight turnaround. I was a few days ahead of the crew and they were coming behind so I was just teeing everything up. And, um, and then I was going to meet them in a lovely little hotel in a place called Oterra. And somewhere along the way on the West Coast, because it rains quite a bit, I bought um, a leather Akubra because it was just easier than I could be out in all weathers, didn't matter. Somewhere along the way, I'd also um, uh, picked up some op shop jumpers and things. Anyway, um, I meet the crew on a uh, quite a dark night in Oterra and um, bound out of the bar. Hi, welcome, come on in. And they're thinking, who is this local nutter? How are we going to get 
she's just like, she's going to drive us nuts. And I'm like, guys, it's me. And they were just beside themselves that I'd managed to turn into a West Coaster like that. And it was just sort of, I didn't even notice that it happened. That came out of Antarctica, New Zealand, really wanting somebody to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Scott Base. And, um, and so TVNZ asked us to do that. And um, that was amazing, actually, because after travelling so much with Intrepid Journeys, you think you've seen the world and you think, oh, well, Antarctica. And it had been a particularly busy year. I'd been to Madagascar and Iran with about two weeks in between. And then I was supposed to go down to the ice, um, you know, for three weeks or a month, I can't remember. And I thought, oh, that's the last place I want to go. I'm tired, you know, all that white. <laughs> and... Um, Got down there, but it really is the most amazing. I mean, it, you can't describe how uh, what it's like. It's just you have to be there and experience it. There's lots of shades of white, actually. The sort of blue snow, and <laughs> but um, the the whole the whole Antarctic. It's like going to another planet. That's all I can say. It was like going to another planet, and uh, we were out in the field a lot. We went trekking for four days in the dry valleys. Um, we went out to Scott's hut and Shackleton's hut, and. Uh, the Cape Bird and things, so we weren't always at Scott Base and uh, we were camping, you know, in Antarctica. Uh, it, it, oh, it'll stay with me for the rest of my life. That was Marcus's idea. Initially it was called South, a thank you note, because one thing about Southland and Marcus and, and the south of the South Island is that it's been a, a saviour in his life. You know, he um, he feels that he's found his real home and um, and he adores it down there, he hates being away from it. And he wanted to share all the stories that he'd heard when he's been down there, and um, and so he suggested doing that series that, w that we also subtitled Marcus's Holiday, because he really just wanted to go and do the Milford Track, and he wanted to go and do this particular track down near Pusica Point, and he's always wanted to go to Doubtful Sound on a boat. So he just listed his dream trip around Southland, and we organised it, and then we all went on it, and it was um, it was... It was like, we had a lot of fun. It was actually just like having a holiday. And then we were going, oh, we're actually making a TV programme. Radar and I moved to a paddock with a tent and went, we're going to make television. And it's like, oh, how's that going to go then? And it was a very organic process. Basically, we just um, started nutting out um, things that we could do to make you know, life more livable on this piece of land. And it took off, you know, it had a momentum of its own. But the interesting thing about that is if you ask people what that show was about, they'll say it was about self-sufficiency and all those sorts of things, which, you know, to a degree it was, but it's about community. It's about the fact that you can't live, um, you can't live without community, whatever that community may be, and that sometimes the best thing to be a part of is something quite simple and something quite honest. And, um, and that's why that was so much fun. We, you know, we made tremendous friends and um, just been very privileged to have very, very talented, knowledgeable people share, you know, a lifetime's work with us. He is a tremendously talented guy in that he's got, I, I think his upbringing was kind of similar to mine in that he spent a lot of time on the farm with his parents and grandparents and picked up a lot of skills along the way. And um, it was just, we were just lucky that this was the perfect vehicle to bring all those things out because I didn't necessarily know they were there either. I don't think he would have known. But, um, you know, he can hunt, shoot and fish and gardening's getting better. Um, and, you know, he understands the importance of making things accessible and making things exciting and having that joyful exuberance about something quite ordinary and um, that most people would go, mm, you know, his eyes light up and he's like Basil Brush with a bushy tail. So, yes, no, the perfect host in many ways. I just wish he'd keep his pants on a bit more. Every time we get into a scene, he's nutting out ways that he can have semi-nude baths. It's supposed to be a family show.